This is a revision video about metallic bonding and the properties of metallic substances, which comes up in Unit 2 of AQA GCSE Chemistry and Combined Science. By the end of this video, you should be able to identify substances that contain metallic bonds, label a diagram of metallic bonding, describe the structure and bonding in a metal, describe the properties of a pure metal, explain those properties, and also compare that pure metal to an alloy. When looking at the periodic table, we can divide the elements into the metals, which are found towards the left and the bottom of the periodic table, and the non-metals, which are found towards the right and the top of the table. We can draw a staircase to separate these out, although you may have seen it drawn in a slightly different place, depending on who's taught you and which specification you followed. However, this doesn't really matter, because as far as we're concerned for GCSE, the only metallic substances that we're interested in are the ones that are quite a long way away from the line, and so it doesn't matter where you've chosen to draw it. All of the substances that are coloured in blue form metallic bonds. If we look at a sample of a pure metal at an atomic level, we see that it has a giant structure, which means that the structure contains thousands of particles, forming something called a giant metallic lattice. This lattice is mainly made of positive ions, and the reason that they're positive ions is because each metal atom has lost its outer shell electrons, which are negative, and so the ion that is left behind is positive, and these form regular rows. Surrounding those regular rows of positive ions are the electrons that have been given up by each atom. They're not tied to one particular location anymore, so we call them delocalised electrons. These form a C around the positive ions. Now, because the ions are positively charged and the electrons are negatively charged, they're attracted to each other by a force called a strong electrostatic force of attraction. And this is acting between the positive ions and the negative delocalised electrons, and it's holding the entire giant metallic lattice together. Knowing about this structure allows us to explain why metals have three characteristic properties. They have high melting and boiling points, so with the exception of mercury, they're solids at room temperature. They conduct both electricity and thermal energy, and they're malleable, so pure metals are relatively soft. The reason that the metals have high melting and boiling points is because of that force holding the ions and electrons together. The electrostatic force of attraction is very strong, so it needs a lot of energy to overcome it, and at room temperature there just isn't enough energy, so that's why metals tend to be solids. The delocalised electrons are responsible for conducting electricity and thermal energy. As we said, they aren't tied to one particular ion, they're free to move, and so because they can move through the metal, they can carry charge or carry thermal energy from one side of the metal to the other. Finally, metals are relatively soft and malleable because the positive ions are arranged in these regular rows. This means that it's possible for all of the ions in one row to move over the row below it without disturbing it. Let's look at this in action. If I were to push the top row of ions in this metal, it's possible for them to all shunt along and slide over the other layers. Let's compare this to an alloy. Alloys are an example of a mixture. Whereas in a pure metal there are only atoms of one size, in an alloy there are atoms of more than one size because there's more than one element, usually a second metal or maybe carbon. Because the atoms are different sizes, there aren't completely regular rows. The larger atoms distort the rows and push them out of shape. Because of this, it's no longer possible for the layers to slide over each other. And this is going to make the alloy much harder. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that was a useful reminder of everything you need to know about metallic bonding. Don't forget to like and subscribe below for more GCSE chemistry videos coming soon.